Hi, I'm Jarvis. No relation. First off, I wanted to say uh, thank you to all of the viewers out there who are being patient with me and my inconsistent upload schedule right now. For those of you who don't know, I have a full-time job outside of YouTube and it's hard sometimes to keep up with that YouTube grind. And so I'm just thankful uh, people still come back. Actually, speaking of being thankful, look what uh, came in the mail today. It's from YouTube. I wonder what it is. Wow, it's the souls of my first 100,000 subscribers. Oh, I miss your tech video. I miss the gap. We're just copying Danny Gonzalez. We have to go back, Kate. Hey, David Dobrik, you really sold us out for life hack hey, videos? No, wait, let me out. First. On to a million, I guess. So up until this point, when we've talked about bad channels on YouTube, they've been pretty impressive operations, like big media companies with actors and set pieces and production quality. But today I wanted to talk about what would happen if you didn't have that production quality and instead you added in a big hearty helping of other people's content. If you take both of those ingredients and you mix them together just right, you'd get- It's called Five Minute Crafts. Channel today we're gonna be talking like about Bright Side. the worst channel. Faxverse, you'd get Faxverse, the YouTube channel I'm talking, not my YouTube. Faxverse is a YouTube channel uh, with like five million subscribers on YouTube and two million subscribers on Facebook with such popular videos as you know, the classic 15 everyday things you've been doing wrong, you know, some, some life hack action in there. 10 horse breeds that you will not believe exist. Uh, and last but not least, 10 things you did not know what they are. They mostly make list videos and news story videos that are often about birth stories. As for the actual facts on the channel, they range from opinion. Most people make a taco and they put shredded lettuce on the top. This is a mistake. Okay, to wrong. If you look at the word Pepsi on the bottom, it looks like it's just printed upside down. If you look closely, it actually spells out is dead in honor of the Day of the Dead. It even includes the traditional Day of the Dead skull. To downright harmful. Charging your flash drive. If you need your flash drive to have its own power source, plug it into your phone's charger box. Have you ever noticed USB drives embedded into the walls of buildings and curbs? You can take one of those drives and plug it into your laptop. If you're just gonna get a virus. Please be careful if you're checking out the channel for yourself because there's like a number of grotesque thumbnails and triggering topics that I'm not gonna go into here. I have no idea why these facts channels always get so dark, but I'm gonna focus on their lighter stuff which is just as bad. As for what this channel aims to accomplish, I wanted to have them explain it in their own words, but I, I can't actually find anything on their YouTube. They just seem to have uh, this message on literally every video description in their channel. Huh, yeah, that's weird. I, I wonder why they would need to make that message about copyright issues so, so easy to find. Maybe uh, in the facts verse, which, uh, I assume is the only universe in which their content is good. This is a special incantation to ward off evil spirits um, known as copyright strikes. You know, because this is something that you would never have to do if you weren't constantly stealing other people's content. Which reminds me, Faxverse, if you're watching this, feel free to reach me at uh, Jarvis is totally not stealing your content at gmail.com. I found a post that's called Our Story on their Facebook, which was posted kind of recently. Since the launch of our YouTube channel on September 16th, 2015, since then, we have gained over 1.6 billion new viewers and 3.7 million subscribers on our YouTube channel. And that's the end of the story. And in their about section on Facebook, they say, our primary goal is to edutain our fans, semicolon, that is to educate and entertain. First off, they could have easily just said that their goal was to educate and entertain their fans and then just stopped there, but instead they chose to define the word edutain. 
but they did correctly use a semicolon, so I'm impressed. So they post a lot of these uh, images with text on them. You've used the internet before. They're supposed to tell you a crazy fact. And the first one I found, a herd of sheep is leaving the stall. There's no fence, only the gate, the trap of thinking. Those sheep, they could have escaped the whole time. Uh, but only when the gate door opens do they all go out through the door. And it's like supposed to be a metaphor for how like we get trapped in our thoughts. Except um, there is a fence. Uh, it, you can clearly see it in this image. So now that you have an idea of what we're working with here, here's some more facts. Facts first. The top speed of Bugatti Veyron. <laughs> no article, <laughs> like, it's a, like it's a person's name. Hello, nice to meet you. I'm Bugatti Veyron. <laughs> the top speed of Bugatti Veyron is limited not by its engine, but rather it's tires exploding. Okay, but like, how do you misspell tires? <laughs> Studies has shown that a bad mood can make you numb to things that would otherwise stop you from making unwise decisions. I had to read that like five times. If you're in a bad mood, you might make bad decisions. <laughs> Facts first. A Chinese boy sold his kidney just to buy an iPhone and iPad. He is only reason behind famous connection of iPhone and kidney. What? I just looked at their Instagram and it's exactly the same thing. In a recent test, Android beats Apple iPhone in every test. Test revealed that Android is much better than iPhone in almost every way. <laughs> facts. <laughs> okay, so all of their facts seem uh, poorly researched, if you can imagine. And I think they're just coming from the Today I Learned and WTF subreddits, but it's really hard to know for sure, which appears to be their business model. But on that note, let's take a look at uh, the Facts First YouTube channel. So the first video I wanna look at is called 10 Things you did not know what they are. Which sounds like a five-year-old uh, started talking and, and like didn't know his way out of the sentence. Uh, uh, ten, 10 things that you- That, that you, you um, did you not had, know you, you, what, you could, you- They are. Facts Verse presents 10 things you did not know the use for. 10 things. <laughs> I love this guy's voice. So if all Facts Verse videos have the same voice actor and he's awesome and he has nothing else to do with the channel. He doesn't write the scripts or anything. So we like him. He's the best part. Number one, the loop on the back of your shirt. Most people look at the loop on the back of their shirt and wonder what it's for. There is a purpose for it on the back of your shirt. Why does he keep saying back of your shirt? <laughs> There are actually three documented reasons, and it's unknown which is correct. Spoiler alert, it is very known which is correct. This video just doesn't know for some reason. The first is the most obvious. It's a way to hang your shirt on a hook. And that is the correct one. This doesn't make sense, however, because if you hang your shirt on a hook by that loop, it will become wrinkled quickly. No, it won't. <laughs> These shirts aren't even hanging by that loop. The second could be a way to help you fasten your tie easier. The last purpose is more romantic. Wait, they're not even gonna explain how it can help you fasten your tie easier? Fasten your tie? That is even the, that's not even, you tie a tie. That's why it's called a tie. Years ago, American University students were said to have removed the loop from the shirt when they started dating a girl exclusively. To show she was taken, the girl would wear a scarf with the university's emblem. That's not what it's for though. Like just cause a couple of random people use the loop in a weird way doesn't, automatically mean that's what it's for. All right, I know what I just said, but did you know that the loop on the back of your shirt is also for holding pens? It broke. Facts first. And it can also be used as a coaster for a tiny beverage. And then it, it goes on and ends with this weird slow zoom on Scarlett Johansson. To make matters worse, I found the exact same list on Brightside's website. Y'all remember Brightside, right? <laughs> Illegal things that you do every day. Um, two videos, uh, one by Brightside and another one by a creator called The Infographic Show. Sure, The Infographic Show posted their video before Brightside, but this is like a common idea. Um, this could just be a case of parallel thinking. Oh, these thumbnails are exactly the same. They didn't even change the speech bubble. They just redrew the art. I don't think that Faxverse is at all related to Brightside. So they might have just stolen uh, this exact list in order from them, which is honestly just ironic <laughs> to me. I, I actually also just found uh, the exact same list on another website called catfly.com. So maybe I just don't know how the internet works. Let's just move on to my favorite video. 10 Pokemon that actually exist 
in real life. I don't know if y'all know this, but I'm a bit of a Pokemon head and this video is hilarious because it seems to be written by somebody with no knowledge of Pokemon whatsoever. <laughs> Factsverse presents 10 Pokemon that actually exist in real life. All right, so I'm gonna stop you right there. Uh, no Pokemon exist in real life. That's kind of the thing. It's an, it's an animated <laughs> cartoon, uh, but I get, I get what they're going for because most Pokemon are based on real animals, but this is like just a funny title to me. Number one, Drowsy. Drowsy is a mysterious looking Pokemon who was inspired by Baku. He may look scary, but he's actually very kind. He has, however, helped put others to sleep from time to time. What does that mean? Number six, Magikarp. The Magikarp is a water Pokemon. The Magikarp. In order to transform Magikarp into something that is useful, you would need to catch thousands. Huh? Number six, Caterpie. Really? Caterpie? How hard? <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, the Victory Bell. Another like the just hanging out in front of the Pokemon's name. The Victory Bell is based on the pitcher plants. While Victory Bell is not quite as dangerous as the pitcher plant, it is pretty close. He has a very high attack level with a lower defense level. This makes them angry and always on watch. Literally none of that made any sense. The good thing about Victory Bell is that he has a normal happiness level. What? What? It's happening. I'm tired. Am I am I dreaming? Am I imagining this? <sighs> All right, let's finish. Number 10, Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur is a dual type of Pokemon. He is a grass slash poison Pokemon. He is a reptile and he's inspired by a frog. He's not inspired by a frog. His name is Bulbasaur. He's a reptile. Frogs are amphibians. I, it, am I? Why do I make these videos? The coolest thing about Bulbasaur is that he has also traveled to Mario Smash Brothers, and you can see him there. Mario Smash Brothers? Okay, I've almost completed uh, my walkthrough of <laughs> Facts versus Content. This one's called Photos to Test Your Intelligence. And it's one of those like spot the difference games. This should be fun. This should like relieve my stress from watching that Pokemon video. Number one, woman in front of the window. Both of these pictures look exactly alike. You see it, right? Most people's eyes would stay up toward the woman and compare the scene outside. Her hair. He's not going to keep talking about. The difference is in a place where your eyes would not naturally gaze to first. How long is he going to spend talking your about eyes? this? In the photo on the left, there is no mouse hole. We all saw that instantly, right? Number five, the city. What city? I'm not telling. Uh, it's only got one of the most well-known clock towers in the world and an iconic double-decker bus. I mean, if you don't know what city this is, um, it's Tokyo, Japan. This picture brings your eyes to the towers on the building on the left. You may have started counting them. Even the train is suspect. In the photo on the right, there is a plane in the sky. There is actually a second difference in this photo. In the clock on the left, it's 10 minutes before 10. Since the other photos contained just one difference, this one is a bit more tricky. Wow, how condescending. Also, he left out half the differences in this photo. The numbers on the bus are different. The This person, this like pedestrian walking here is different. So, all right, man, step off. Did they do that on purpose? Maybe that's the test? Number six, the spherical sculptures. This is one of the easiest photos so far. Your eyes are immediately brought to the answer. In the photo on the left, there's a branch hanging in the left corner of the photo. If you missed this one, you have probably been missing them all. I don't know why he's being so mean to the viewer because this photo has nine differences in it. I know because I digitally compared the images because I'm a goddamn nerd. I can't tell if they're so smart to do this. Maybe they're testing your intelligence because they wanna see if you'll take the word of a random YouTube video as fact, but maybe that's just like too perfect a metaphor. I also found this entire list of images in a LifeBuzz article, which is another one of these like content farm blogs. Like at this point, it just became a game of finding this content elsewhere on the internet. 18 awful lies around daily use objects that'll make you second guess everything. Very negative. 
18 awful lies by horrible people who deserve to die. <laughs> yeah, like this this is just ripped directly off the BuzzFeed list. But what's like ridiculous about it is that like the BuzzFeed list is just, you know, pulling stuff from Reddit and putting it together, but at least it's curating the content and then just like Faxverse comes in and it's like, no, we're just gonna narrate your BuzzFeed list and it's gonna get 2.3 million views content. That's, uh, that's about all I have for today. Is Faxverse the worst channel on YouTube? Maybe. I sincerely doubt because of the, the description in all of their videos that they're asking for permission ahead of time. And even if people after the fact are like doing copyright claims and monetizing their videos, they're still making a ton of money off of other people's stuff. You could argue that they're like doing some work of like editing the videos or, or scripting, you know, the quippy dialogue, but it's just not different enough to me. And that's why I wanted to talk about it. I don't know how people feel about this. Anyway, it's like 1 a.m. and I don't even know if anything I've said makes any sense. So I'm just gonna end the video right now. Thanks to Felix Trump for turning on notifications. I have no idea if I'm saying that right. If you want me to butcher your name, please turn on notifications and leave a comment on this video. Okay, so that's the end of the video, but I still have so many questions. Like, should we keep doing this commentary thing? Are y'all having fun? Um, and also, why don't you follow me on Instagram and Twitter? I, I make good stuff.